Welcome to Biology My Passion. I am Saumya Harikrishna. We are studying the chapter Improvement in Food Resources and we discussed the introductory part in the previous video. Now we are going to discuss the three scientific approaches in the agricultural field. One is crop variety improvement, second crop production management and third crop protection management. So today we will discuss crop variety improvement. So improving the variety of crop, that means when we are making a new generation of crops, we want the yield to be the best. So what can we do? We have to choose the best quality seeds for sowing. So this includes the steps for developing good quality varieties or hybrids. So how can we incorporate the desired qualities in a plant? Suppose as such naturally it may not be there. So naturally uh, occurring plants are called wild plants. Okay. So they may not have all the qualities in one. But how can we incorporate it? For example, suppose there is one plant which has got lot disease resistance. That's very important in agriculture. Because otherwise a lot of insects and pests will attack it or it will be uh, in, uh, having diseases. That will reduce the yield. The same way fruit quality or crop uh, product quality is also important. So, suppose we have two plants, one is having uh, disease resistance, the other one is having good yield. How can we combine these two in the same plant? So, there are actually two methods used in this. First is a very conventional method called a hybridization. Whereas the second method is uh, the latest biotechnology method that is called a genetically modified crop. In crop variety improvement, the first method is hybridization. Hybridization means the crossing of genetically dissimilar parents. Suppose I am crossing two same type of plant, it is not going to give me a new variety. So I have to choose two varieties to hybridize or cross. So that is called a genetically dissimilar parents we are combining. How can we combine? The process is hybridization where we take the pollen grain from one of the plants having one of the desired qualities and we dust it on the stigma of the flower of the another plant which is having the other desired quality and we collect the seeds. Okay. Then the once the seeds are growing we might get these two qualities combined in a same plant. Okay. So that will be then cultivated for the next generation. So this process can be of three types inter-varietal, inter-specific and inter-generic. So let's discuss this one by one. Inter-varietal. Inter-varietal. Inter means between. Okay. Indra means within. Inter means between. You must have learned about inter-school means what? Between two schools. Intra-school means within the school. For example, if I uh, cross between two varieties of rice or two varieties of mangoes, it is called an inter-varietal. Second is called an inter-specific, means uh, cross between two different uh, species. So you have to understand what is a species. Species means it's a group of organisms which are very closely related, means very similar to each other and they can reproduce among themselves. That means human beings if you consider that is a species. So all we know that reproduction is possible within human beings. The same way if you take lion that is a species. Tiger is a uh, species. So like that different species are available. So if you take two different species and cross it that is called a inter-specific hybridization. In case of uh, pea plants, one variety of pea like a Pisum sativum that is called a garden pea. If I cross it with Pisum falvum, another uh, P. You don't have to worry about these names, I'm just telling. Both are Pisum, means it's the same uh, group, but two different species. One is Sativum, one is a Falvum. So, these two when I combine, that is called an interspecific between two different species. Okay, another example in animal kingdom would be easy to, for you to understand. Horse is a species, doggy is another species. So usually doggy mates with the donkeys and a horse within horse reproduction. But sometimes the donkey may mate with a horse that will produce a mule. Okay, so that, that kind of reproduction is called an inter-specific. So uh, in plants it is all the more easy to conduct inter-specific uh, crosses. Then next is called an inter-generic means between two different genera means the two different groups of uh, plants means when we come to uh, species to genera or genus the similarities are more so we have made so many plants like that for example field pea was crossed with a grass pea or some fruits like a pear is crossed with some other fruit to give more juicy and more tasty fruits so like this uh, kind of crossing is called a what inter generic so uh, inter varietal means you just have to learn the uh, definition inter varietal means between two varieties of plants of the same species 
Interspecific means between two different species of plants and uh, inter uh, generic means between two genera of plants. Genera here is a plural of the word genus. Hybridization is a very time consuming process. It's not that easy to get the desired result. Uh, it may take several years to get the desired plant or several trials to get the desired qualities in the same plant. So since it is a time consuming process, we have one more method of producing the crop variety, better crop variety that is called a genetically modified crop. Here it is a part of biotechnology which is the latest science where we are genes are being transferred that is suppose we have two plants one has a gene for disease resistance whereas the other has very good yield so i want this high yielding plant to have disease resistance as well so i will take the dna of this disease resistant plant from any one cell isolate it and i will locate the gene for disease resistance i will take that gene Hope you remember gene, DNA, everything. If you don't know, go back to nucleus in fundamental unit of life. Watch that video and understand. Okay. So this gene is now transferred to the uh, high yielding plant so that this plant will have both the qualities. So here it is a very precise process. We will get the result for sure. But it is not as easy as I said. It's a very complicated process involving several steps and we need sophisticated labs and equipments and skilled people. But still it is very good for our uh, 21st century. Now when we are producing any new plant either using either of these methods either through hybridization or through genetically modified crop I have to make sure that the new plants are suitable for growing in different climatic conditions and geographical conditions. For example, if I am a scientist developing a new plant in Indian Agricultural Research Institute in Delhi, I cannot uh, see only the climate of Delhi because in, uh, Delhi is actually an industrial place. There is no much, not much cultivation. I have to focus on the farmers in Punjab, Haryana, UP and all while I am creating or I cannot only focus on North Indian uh, groups but I have to see the eastern side, the western side and the south Indian part also the, I have to consider. So wherever it is grown they have to show good results. So cultivation practices that we follow and the yield of the plant depend upon several factors. First of all the climatic factors like weather, then the soil quality and of course the availability of water. But can we predict the weather conditions? No. Sometimes it may be drought or sometimes it may be flood. We cannot predict it. So whenever we are making a plant, we have to make it adaptable to more or less all these situations so that it can grow in different parts of the country. We have even developed a plants which can grow in high salinity, that means salty soil. That is another adaptation plants require. Now, uh, we will see when we are doing this crop variety improvement, whether using hybridization or using genetic modification, what are the factors we want in the new plant? Means that what are the qualities that we look for or we make in the new plants? Let us discuss the different factors for which crop variety improvement is done. So, there are actually six factors that we have to study. First is higher yield, then uh, improved quality, resistance to stresses like biotic and abiotic resistance, change in maturity duration, wider adaptability and desired agronomic characteristics. Now we have to see each one in detail. Higher yield. Higher yield means suppose a variety is giving a particular yield from an acre of land, then a new variety that we are producing should give more than that. Suppose I am getting two tons of uh, cereals or grains from one acre of land. So next time it should be at least 2.5, right? Otherwise there is no point in uh, telling that it is a higher yield. Okay, so the next point is product quality. Product quality depends on the crop variety because from different crops we are expecting different quality. For example, if we are thinking about the cereals, we are using mainly wheat which is a major crop all over the world. Uh, there we want the baking quality of the flour. So when in Indian system when we are making the roti or chapati, we need that to be very soft. So that's called a baking quality or bread also it should be very soft. Whereas when it comes to pulses, there is no question about softness there or baking quality. Pulses are rich in proteins. So there we want protein quality. If we are talking about coconut or a sunflower or a sesame, whatever oil seeds we have, we are looking for the quality of oil with the less dangerous fat or cholesterol, right? Uh, so that is a quality that we are looking for in that particular plant. 
or finally when it comes to fruits and vegetables we are looking for the preservation quality because uh, fruits and vegetables unlike other crops after harvesting they are getting decayed very fast so we should be able to preserve them for a longer period of time so that quality we will try to improve in fruits and vegetables so product quality varies with the different crops next is biotic and abiotic stresses biotic means living factors abiotic means non-living factors of environment non-living doesn't mean the table or chair or anything non-living factors of environment like temperature moisture humidity or uh, uh, wind etc okay soil all these so what are the abiotic stresses uh, affecting plants the insects diseases and uh, nematodes nematodes means they are the round worms infesting different plants whereas Plants also have to have a resistance against abiotic stresses like a drought or a flood or water logging, salinity, frost or a cold etc. So these two stresses to a greater extent we can increase in plants. Next is about change in maturity duration. Means maturity duration means starting from the time of sowing till the harvest. That duration is called a maturity period. So if the maturity period is long the farmer will have to wait for a long time to get the harvest for example rice naturally it takes six months so uh, if suppose we are sowing it in the month of june that is it's a curry season and we are getting the product in december so almost six months means uh, it's a long duration we can change the duration or reduce the duration to three months then we can have two crops within the same curry season understood so uh, this is an advantage for the farmers Coarse production also becomes less and uniform maturity if their uh, duration is short. So advantages of a sh uh, short maturity duration are multiple crops in a year, low cost production, uniform maturity of the crop. That is uh, next is a wider adaptability. That means already I mentioned whatever products we are or crop we are producing, it should be able to adapt to different geographical and climatic conditions. Then next is a desirable agronomic characters means if we are growing the plant to give us a fodder to cattle that time we don't want the product we want the plant to be so huge with a lot of leaves and size so that a bulk is there to give to the animal okay whereas when we are uh, growing cereals like a rice or wheat we don't want a huge plant because it will take up a lot of nutrients so if we can find short plants or dwarf varieties with the same yield that would be better so uh, agronomic character means uh, the character of the plant also uh, changes based on the type of crops that we are cultivating so this you have to buy hard each po uh, the points like a six uh, points for which we are doing crop variety improvement economic characteristics short variety if you prefer they will give more productivity okay uh, so hope you understood all these uh, points discussed under the crop variety improvement so in the next video we will discuss crop production management Thank you for watching my video. If you like my videos, please like, share and subscribe to my channel, Biology My Passion.